Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a small quilt. You can use it for a wall hanging or a table topper, and it's going to have five stars in it. They're going to be floating point stars. And this is my favorite kind of project because it uses up scraps. Now for this project, you need five lights and five darks. You don't need very much of each one. You need the equivalent of about a nine by 20 inch piece. And then we're also going to need a half a yard of fabric, and that's going to do these backgrounds and a little border. Now, every time I do a scrap project video, I always get questions afterwards. What if I don't have scraps? What if I want to use yardage? How much do I need? So you are going to need one fat eighth of five lights and five darks if you want to start with yardage. And even though I've got a sketch here, this is not the final pattern. You can get the free pattern by clicking the link below the video and that will give you all the cutting sizes, all the yardage, and all the instructions. Now from each one of your dark fabrics, you're going to need one five inch square and eight three inch squares. And from each of the lights, you're going to need four three and a quarter inch squares and four rectangles that are three and a quarter by five inches. Now, as long as your scrap pieces are at least eight inches by 20 inches, you can stack them up and cut all the darks at one time and then cut all the lights together. If you're cutting from odd size scraps like I've got here, you're just going to have to cut some pieces individually. Now that I have all the pieces cut, I'm going to separate them into blocks. So each block is going to get one of these center squares. Then each block is going to get some star points. So these are the eight star points we cut. And I'm not gonna use the same star points that I'm using in the center. I'm gonna use these somewhere else, like right there. So this is what I call deal a meal. I usually lay these out and see what looks good together. I'm not gonna put that there. That might look good there, that might look good there. I may tray around a little bit, but every block gets all these pieces. So we're gonna need a background. This is the background for the star points. So I'm just going to lay them out kind of indiscriminately here. And then I may trade around to make sure my colors look balanced, but I'm always gonna use four different fabrics for each block. The first thing we're going to work on is the star points. So that's these three inch squares here. Now the rectangles they go on are three and a quarter inches. So this is not the same size as this on purpose. Now we are going to stitch from the corner of this star point, the dark one, to the other corner. You can mark that if you like, but I find it's easier to put a piece of painter's tape or masking tape on your machine from the needle hole straight down and then put the tip, the corner of the dark print right at the needle and put the other end right on the line of the tape and keep it on there as you stitch. And that will give you a nice straight line and then you won't have to draw. Now we're going to fold this over and all the raw edges should meet and they are meeting up very nicely. So that helps you know if you stitched right along the edge there. So I'm gonna gently finger press and then I'm gonna stitch the rest of these on. Now let's take these over to the ironing board. Now even though they're finger pressed, I'm still going to want to iron these. Make sure they're nice and flat. Then I'm going to trim off the back two layers. So I usually just pick up a pair of scissors here. You can go over to the cutting mat and use your rotary blade, but I think this is a little bit quicker. Now we're going to take a second star point and we're going to add one of these to every piece. So again, stitch from the corner of this to the far corner. And then open it up and finger press. Iron and trim these as well. Now we're ready to put the block together. So these are the four corners. So these are gonna go here and here, here and here. The star points go like this. And I like to stitch my rows together all at the same time. So I'm not gonna make each row separate. I'm gonna put this guy on top of here 
and stitch it and leave it on the machine. Then I'm going to take the next two pieces, right sides together, leave it on the machine. And this helps keep me from getting mixed up with what goes where. So these are the last two. We're going to put this on here. And I'm not going to trim the threads. I'm just going to leave it together. Now this came from over here, so we'll just open it up. And then we'll take this last row. This guy's going to go here. And we'll just add the pieces all the way down, putting them right sides together. Everything fits perfect. There's nothing to match. This is the last corner. Now, we're going to want to finger press. So we are going to press on this row, we're going to press the corners, the seam allowances toward the corners. And on this row, they're going to go toward the center. And that's where they want to go because it's extra thick right here in the middle. It wants to go that way. So I always try to use my patchwork to help me decide which way should things go. They want to go away, they want to go away. Now everything is lined up in opposite directions. So when we sew these rows together, everything's going to nest. So this is going to lay nice and flat and it's going to be real easy to match the intersection. Now you don't have to worry about trying to go in any particular spot here because these stars are what we call floating. So you don't have to worry right here about driving over right where that intersection is. It's meant to be away from the middle and that's on purpose because one of the problems new quilters have is their points get cut off. So this gets sewn a little too deep and it doesn't make a nice point. Well, this way it's floating. There's always gonna be a nice point there. So the first block is all done. I just have to make four more. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those finished. The blocks are all stitched together now and they turned out 10 and a half inches square. So now we need to cut some background fabric to go between all of them. And so those blocks are also going to be 10 and a half inches square. So this is going to be really easy to stitch together. It's just a three by three patchwork. Nothing to match, no intersections except for here and here. Then I'm going to add a little border and then the whole top will be done. I've got the top all done. I've got the back laid out and the batting laid out. Now I'm going to quilt this on my regular sewing machine and I can't drop my feed dogs. Some of you guys have special machines. You can quilt on them. You can do free motion quilting. I'm always going to have that feed dog pulling in the bottom. So I like to lay my top crooked on my back because that way, if I'm doing straight lines on here, my back is a little bit on bias grain, not on a straight grain. And that'll make it a lot easier to quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and pin around and put some pins in the middle take it over to the machine. The first thing I'm going to do is just baste around the edges so all the layers are held together and then I can get rid of these pins around here also. I'm going to do the easy and simple quilting first. I'm going to go around the border here and I'm not going to go in the ditch. I'm going to go right on the border then I'm going to go between the squares. That will anchor everything down and make it easier to quilt these patchwork and plain blocks. So I'm going to put my presser foot right next to my seam there. So I'm about an eighth of an inch away, maybe even a little closer, but I'm on the border. Now I'm right in the ditch here. It's pretty easy. And that's the last row of quilting between the squares. Now we have to decide where to quilt the rest of the quilt. So I'm going to start with the stars and I'm going to go just outside the perimeter of the star here. So I've got my presser foot, the inside of my presser foot, right along the seam. So I'm a little less than an eighth of an inch away from the outside of the star and that's going to help that star puff up a little bit. It's going to give it a little bit of dimension. So 
So just keep going around and pivoting all the way around the outside. I've gone around all of the stars. That part's kind of fun. Now we need to decide what to do in these blank areas, and I'm going to mark them before I quilt them. So there's different ways to mark your fabric. I have some chalk pencils here, and I've also got this water soluble marking pen. And I recommend trying it out on a practice piece first because you wanna make sure the lines are going to come off. Now, if I mark with this blue here, it shows up real well. It's a little hard to get off. Now, it will wash off, but I'm not planning on washing this before I use it. You can mark in the silver, it's a little bit lighter. And if it's hard to get on there a little bit there. If you're stitching right on your line, like I did here, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't come all off. Now, if you wanna mark a solid line and then wiggle stitch over it, you want all of that to come off. And this is what I found works the best. This pen here makes a great line, but if you get it even slightly wet, it just completely disappears. Now, you do need to be careful. Some pens will mark very nicely, but they will disappear before you get all the quilting done. So double check, make sure that will stay on there long enough so you have time to get all your quilting done. I'm going to mark this block every two inches and then I'm going to quilt it and if I think it needs more quilting I'll put a little more in. Now my block isn't quite 10 inches so my first line is not quite two inches away but after that I can just use that line to measure from. So the first thing I'm going to do is back tack at the beginning here because there's nothing to hold that stitching down just a little bit. Now I am just gonna waver over this line. It doesn't need to be real exact. So I'm just gonna grab some of the fabric here and I'm gonna head this way and that way and this way and then that way. And I'm just making gentle curves here by just turning it a little bit and then I'll back tack at the bottom. Now, if you don't wanna do those curves, you can just do straight lines, but the idea is to make them somewhat abstract and they don't have to perfectly be parallel each one. Just waver a little back and forth. It's all quilted now. There's those squiggly lines. It's very easy to do. The only other quilting I added was one row inside the center of each star just to hold that down a little bit. Now, I find it useful on a project like this to do just a little bit of quilting. You can always add more, but if you start out by doing every quarter inch, you may decide that's too much and it's hard to go back. It's a lot easier to add. Now, I put on a dark binding. I think that really frames it nicely. So if this was hanging up on your wall, that'll make a nice frame on it. It also looks good from the backside and maybe you can see the quilting a little bit there. You can see the star shapes and you can see those they look like star beams, the wavery lines. Now each star, they're floating. So each star is perfectly pointed. That's why I love this pattern, because even if your sewing isn't perfectly accurate, you're gonna have a point every time and a nice point here. Nothing's ever gonna be chopped off. To give a completely different look, you can use dark background or printed squares in these spots here, and it really makes the patchwork stars pop out rather than just float. But that's a nice look too. So there's a lot of options for this pattern. And even though my stars have the same point all the way around, you could make it truly scrappy by just mixing up your colors around here. It's just a great project for all your scraps. Thanks for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it gives you a lot of good ideas to help you use up some of your scraps. Now, we're gonna have another giveaway. You may have seen this video. This quilt is called Carousel. And it's made with these big circle-y things. Really a fun quilt to make, but today you could win it. So all you have to do is follow the link below that says giveaway and put in your email address and put in your name. And remember, I can mail this to any address in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our tutorials and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.